Hello everyone, I'm Hugo, I'm the co-founder of Blazit, and today we're gonna talk about something that you've probably heard a lot about, a very hot topic recently, Next.js 13. Before we begin, uh, please remember to like and subscribe, uh, it helps us out a lot and we'll make sure that you stay up to date with everything we have to talk about. So on October 23rd this year, Verso, the company behind Next.js, hosted Next.js conference. Um, Lazity, as a Gold Verso partner, had an opportunity to attend, uh, together with many great names. On that very conference, uh, Verso announced the release of Next.js 13, uh, which is one of the biggest releases of the framework since its inception. And today we're gonna talk about what's so big about it, so let's dive in. So the biggest features coming with Next.js 13 that we're going to talk about today are the layouts, our streaming, server components, uh, the new way of fetching data inside Next.js apps, and a couple of other things such as uh, the new version of Next image or Next font. One small caveat is that the big features such as um, the new way of fetching the data, uh, streaming server-side components and layouts are still a beta feature available in the app directory. In, in new Next.js 13 projects. Um, since they're all in beta, uh, it's probably not the greatest idea to use them in production just yet, but um, as we know, Versal team uh, moves pretty fast with releases, so um, as of making of this video, they're still in beta, but there will probably be a, in a stable release pretty soon. The first thing we're gonna talk about is layouts. So the layouts is really something that um, improves developer experience a lot. Namely, uh, so far in Next.js, the way you structured your application um, was having all of your pages in the Pages folder, and that Pages folder sort of uh, served as an API uh, for your project. Now, the big problem with that is, since we all know how many different ways of structuring React projects there are, um, starting from having one single file with everything until it, uh, until it becomes annoying, uh, credits to Dan Abramov on that one, uh, ending on dozens upon dozens of different uh, medium blog posts on how you should structure a project. Now the big thing with that is that whenever you have something like the pages directory, it's a super convenient way of having all your pages in one place, but depending on how complex your app gets, um, you might not even think of your app as just pages. Um, more commonly, especially in more complex applications, um, that's where the concept of layouts come in. So the main difference between thinking about your app uh, in terms of just the pages in the pages directory and uh, the layouts in the new layouts directory is that whenever you have a page, um, it's usually much more complicated than just having a page. Uh, you probably have some sort of a loader for your data. Uh, there are probably maybe a couple of data points that are getting loaded on the page. There's probably some kind of navigation. Uh, maybe the page has some sort of a nested navigation. Uh, so you have a couple of loading states. Uh, you have a couple of components that might be very specific to a certain page, um, which in pages directory might become a little tricky since you have everything in your pages directory. All of the other things we mentioned, being loaders, navigation, layouts, have to be somewhere outside. Um, now with layouts, it's very convenient because you can collocate your code. And if you have, let's say, a dashboard layout directory, uh, in that dashboard layout directory, you can put files like page, loader, navigation, and Next.js will understand file names like page or layout. Uh, and actually allow you to collocate all of the code from that layout in a single directory. If you, if you want to learn more about layouts, and you definitely should, uh, we'll include a video by Sam Selikov from Build UI uh, in the video description. It's published on the Versal channel where he goes uh, very in depth into how layouts work. And we really recommend that you check it out. The next two big features worth mentioning are server-side components and streaming. Server-side components are not really the newest thing. It's um, something that was introduced with React 18 and uh, server-side components are now the first-class citizen in Next.js 13. If you want to learn more about 
what server-side components are and what are the benefits of using them. Um, we'll include the description to our video about them down below. I really recommend you check that out. Just for a quick summary of what server-side components are, uh, as opposed to client-side components, they're React components that are rendered entirely on the server and they're used to basically limit the amount of JavaScript you have to send down the wire uh, so your users can have as little JavaScript in the browser running as possible, uh, which for the data concerns is always a good thing. The next thing that follows server-side components is streaming. Having layouts and server-side components available to us now, uh, we can use both of these concepts to introduce streaming in our application. Streaming meaning uh, however complex your app is and however many data points and complex components you have that require um, different API calls, uh, you will still end up having some parts of your app that can be statically rendered. Uh, what streaming does is that it basically allows you to have um, the skeleton or like all the parts that don't require data uh, being rendered instantly and every single component in your app that requires any kind of data uh, can now be shown with a loading placeholder as the component is progressively streamed from the server to your browser. To streamline this process, you can now use files called loading, loading.js or loading.tsx uh, that you have in your app directory. So for example, if you have a dashboard that has a page.js file in it, uh, that will be automatically uh, understood as a route for dashboard. You can also have a loading.js file, uh, which basically will serve as a loading placeholder for when the page is still loading the data. The next amazing thing about Next.js 13 is the way that we can do data fetching now. The data fetching in Next.js 13 is now a uniform API being just fetch. Basically, all of our get static props, get initial props, get server side props, this is all gone. We now have a single fetch, which extends the native browser fetch API. It does a lot of cool things, uh, such as automatically deduping requests and also allowing you to specify what kind of caching you want to do, sort of imitating the, the former approaches with get static props, get server side props, the new Fetch API is basically the extension of already existing native Fetch API. So if you know the Fetch API, you don't really have to learn much more. Um, the way it extends the Fetch API is that uh, not only it dedupes requests in your application, um, it also allows you to specify the type of caching you want to do with the data, resembling a lot uh, the get static props, get server-side props, um, since the Fetch API replaces all of those, you can basically mimic the behavior using the new Fetch API. Um, and most importantly, you can use the Fetch API to actually collocate your components with your data. And last but not least, we have TurboPack. TurboPack is uh, one of the biggest releases uh, from the Next.js conference, mostly because it's not only a Next.js 13 feature, uh, or not a Next.js 13 feature at all. Um, it's basically a brand new bundler that is supposed to be a Rust-based successor to, known by everyone, Webpack. So far, TurboPack looks really promising. We've seen some crazy benchmarks on the Next.js conference. Uh, we'll, of course, have to see how they, how they fare in reality. Uh, but so far, based on all everything we know, uh, the fact that it's been uh, written based on so, so many lessons learned uh, from other bundlers and so many years of collective experience, um, it looks really promising. If you want to learn more about TurboPack and maybe start benchmarking it yourself, um, there is a great, great video, uh, again on Verso's channel, that we'll include in the description, um, by Maya Teagarden. Uh, she goes really in depth onto how TurboPack came to be, and it's just a incredible video showcasing the history of web bundlers, and we just recommend that you watch it. There are a couple of other honorable mentions uh, with Next.js 13 release, uh, such as the new version of Next Image, uh, which gets a lot of new optimizations, such as less client-side code being shipped. Uh, we get Next Font, which simplifies font loading, which, as we all know, 
uh, from the video that we have on our channel as well, is very problematic. Uh, we have the OG image uh, creator, which is also something that uh, you might find interesting. Um, and a couple of other features, such as um, the new routing middleware, um, the things that you can read about in the Next.js 13 blog post that we'll also mention down in the description below. We hope that you liked uh, our overview of uh, Next.js 13 and all of its features. Uh, I highly recommend that you uh, take a look at the description where we actually mention a couple of very good resources so you can learn more about them. And as always, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. It helps us out a lot and we'll make sure that you won't miss our next video.